In this presentation, a correction osteotomy of the calcaneal tuberosity will be stabilized using 6.5 mm headless compression screws. The planned position of the osteotomy to correct a varus deformity is marked. The osteotomy should be made through the mid portion of the tuberosity, almost perpendicular to its long axis. The osteotomy is made using the oscillating saw. Care must be taken that the osteotomy is perpendicular to the sagittal axis of the calcaneus, otherwise it may be difficult to maintain the desired correction during the fixation. The medial cortex can be felt through resistance to the saw blade. As an alternative, an osteotome can be used to complete the osteotomy and mobilize the tuber fragment. The osteotomy is completed with care. The tuber fragment is translated inferomedial to correct a plano valgus deformity. For a correction of a cavo varus deformity, the tuber fragment is translated superolateral. Once the intended position of the tuber is achieved, it is provisionally maintained by placing an osteotome or Holman retractor within the osteotomy. A 3.2 mm guide wire is then inserted in the midline of the tuber fragment, perpendicular to the osteotomy in the transverse plane. The guide wire is directed towards the calcaneocuboid joint. This orientation of the guide wire will allow compression of the osteotomy without loss of correction. Image intensification is used to evaluate the insertion depth of the guide wire. Two points of fixation are needed to avoid rotation of the tuber fragment, so a second guide wire is inserted, parallel to the first. The measuring device is slid over the guide wire to determine the appropriate screw length. After measuring, the guide wire can be advanced 5 to 10 millimeters to ensure that it will remain in position once the drilling is completed. The guide wire is then over-drilled with the 6 millimeter cannulated drill bit to provide a countersink for the screw head. Here, the screw length is marked on the 5 millimeter cannulated drill bit as a reference to avoid drilling too deeply. In practice, the image intensifier is used to check the drill depth. The 5 mm drill bit is slid over the guide wire, and a hole is made to the appropriate depth. It should be noted that over-drilling may not be necessary in cancellous bone, as the self-tapping screw will advance easily. The compression sleeve handle is inserted in the compression sleeve, and the screw is threaded into the end of the sleeve. The cannulated 6.5 mm hexagonal screwdriver is used later to countersink the screw into the bone. The screw and compression sleeve are advanced over the guide wire. Compression of the osteotomy occurs when the compression sleeve contacts the cortex. Care must be taken not to over-tighten, as this will cause a loss of purchase of the threads in the bone. Once the appropriate compression is achieved, the sleeve handle is removed, and the cannulated screwdriver is slid over the guide wire into the sleeve. The colored rings on the screwdriver shaft indicate the position of the screwdriver tip and the position of the screw head in the bone. When the green ring is level with the compression sleeve, the screw is fully threaded into the compression sleeve, and the screwdriver tip is seated in the recess of the screw head. When the yellow ring is level with the compression sleeve, the screw head is flush with the bone surface. When the red ring is level with the compression sleeve, the screw head is two millimeters below the bone surface. The head of the first screw is advanced until it's two millimeters below the bone surface. A second screw is inserted, using the same procedure.
However, this screw is advanced only until it's flush with the bone surface. The image intensifier is used to check the position of the screws. If the final tightening is performed without the compression sleeve, image intensification will confirm the correct position of the screw head.